scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioned with power, part one. Commissioned with power, part one. Mm. There is there is a rain that will fall in this place tonight. Yes, sir. The Spirit of God has chosen to move as the rain. Isaiah 32, 15. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, then the wilderness be counted for a fruitful field, and then a fruitful field be counted for a forest commissioned with power. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Please pay attention. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The word power there is the Greek word exousia, authority, capacity to represent me. I give you authority. Authority is the right to use power legitimately. You can have power, but if you do not have authority, you can be arrested for using power. I can buy a gun, that is power, but I need a license, authority. What Jesus gave the church is more than power. He gave the church authority. Are we together now? Yes. Behold, I give unto you authority. KJV did not do justice to that expression. But the word there is authority and then power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy. Matthew 28, please, verse 18. Matthew 28, 18. Commissioned with power. 28, 18. And Jesus came and said unto them, Saying, same word, all authority. Jesus is making this statement. All authority is given to me in heaven and in the earth. The next two words, shout it. One, two. Go ye. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Just the first two words. Ready? One, two. One more time. One more time. He never said think ye. He never said wonder ye. Listen. That means before you take any step, make sure you understand what I said before. That all authority in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me. Then he says, go ye. The third word gives perspective to the first two therefore in light of the aforementioned go ye go ye means preach ye go ye means do business ye go ye means advance without fear without favor go ye means whatever you see do not mind it therefore means be more conscious of what I have said than what you see 
all authority. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ was built and ordained to be a church of power, to be a church of grace, to be a manifestation, an ever-increasing effulgence of the wisdom of God. The only institution on earth where God has chosen to tabernacle. He's not in a hospital. He's not in a school. You don't find his presence in a library. You do not even find him in a stadium. If you look for his residence on earth, you find him in the church. In Revelation chapter 1, the Bible says, I, John, he was in the Isle of Patmos on account of the testimony of the Lord. And John said that he heard a voice. And when he turned to see who was speaking, he saw seven lampstands. Those lampstands represent the Catholic, the universal church. Then he says, in the midst of the lampstand, he saw the Son of Man. You will always find him in the midst of the lampstand. Then he began to describe him, the hair, the apparel. And when John saw this, he knew, he said, right, for these things are faithful and they are true. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, there's no time to really discuss what the church is. Hopefully in another platform, God will grant us the grace. But the church was ordained by God to represent three things. Number one, the church is a strategy beyond men the first revelation of the church is a strategy God's own invention the church was a product of God's own creativity the only strategy that is saddled with the responsibility of stamping the gate of hell I will build my church it didn't say we I this is exclusively a product. I, I decided to invent a strategy to stamp the gate of hell. And I named that strategy the Ecclesia, the church. Number two, the church represents men and women who are the living stones that are used to build that spiritual house. The apostle will tell us that we are living stones. This beautiful building is a composite of many stones put together and he calls us the living stones that are built into a spiritual house the very habitation of the lord adumbrated by the temple that solomon built he built that with natural stones but this time around that temple when solomon was done building he said now O lord arise he says come to your resting place now the church has become that resting place. You will always find him in that temple. Number three, the church represents an institution. The only institution that represents the most accurate communication of God's will and intent on earth. The church as an institution represents the most accurate platform for knowing the mind of God, learning the ways of God, and becoming like God. No other institution on earth, no matter how dexterous, has been given that privilege. Only the church. Prophet Micah saw this, and he says, It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be lifted exalted above every other mountain he says and all nations shall flow to it they will say to one another come he says let us go to the mount of the lord to the house of jacob he says he will teach us his ways when you want to find god on earth his location is the church the church is the only institution. Now, it doesn't matter whether we're living up to it or not. I am just telling you that this is our destiny by God's design. To be as an institution, the most accurate communication of this mysterious and unknown God. Our assignment as a church is to give form, fashion, visibility and understanding to God. Mm. Hallelujah. The church was designed by God to be 
a place of extraordinary people. People who are in human flesh but are truly not human. Hallelujah. Now, make sure you understand what I'm saying. It is true. Because when Jesus walked upon the earth, he carried a body that was framed from the womb of Mary. But when Nicodemus saw his works, here was his conclusion. Rabbi, he says, John 3, 1 and 2, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He never mentioned Mary. The conclusion of an intelligent man on seeing the manifestation of Jesus he said, no, these, the resources that come from this man is not affordable in the world of men. He must be a man sent from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, he says, except God be with him. So the church is a blend of extraordinary people. The church was so designed by God to be the most vocal communication of his power, his wisdom, his creativity. I like how the Bible puts it in Ephesians 2.10. We'll consult these verses many times tonight. It says we are his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had foreordained designed that we should walk in them. Another scripture, Ephesians 3.10, it says, Now to the intent, Paul is speaking, that unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the manifold, many-sided, multifaceted wisdom of God. That means the conclusion of the world on seeing us should be that there is a God indeed. Are we together now? There has to be a conclusion that on looking at the church, walk in power, grace, wisdom, and taking advantage of all the resources of heaven as you'll be learning. Something, the end of the whole journey of the making of the church, even the believer, is glory. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit saying that there is the hidden wisdom of God that has been hidden before time and meant for our glory. Listen, that means when you start your journey with God, at any point he finds you, you already know that the end of it is called glory. <laughs> glory comes from two very interesting words. The Greek is kabod. The Hebrew, uh, the, the Hebrew is kabod, the Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness of a thing as an attempt to measure the true worth of it. It was an ancient system that was used to measure wealth with metals. So when you say the glory of a thing, you have to explore all the features that make that thing admirable or worthy of worship or makes it expensive. The glory of my phone cannot be seen until you tell me the features in the phone. The glory of my cloth cannot be seen until you go ahead to now tell me where the fabric was sourced from. All of those information is an attempt to burn into your heart how expensive or rare or valuable. That means when God begins a journey with a believer, as complicated and confusing as that journey is, he mandates that you trust him because even though you may not understand where he's taking you, he leaves you with an assurance based on his integrity that the end of that dealing is glory. That means if at any point in your Christian pursuit you do not yet see glory, he says keep moving. If all you see is tears, keep moving. There is still a layer beyond tears. If all you see is delay, keep pressing, keep praying, keep fasting. Because the end of the destiny of every believer, including the church, is glory. Please sit down. Everything God does is for the revelation and the manifestation of his glory. In John's synoptic account of the miracles of Jesus, you find that in chapter 2 and then 10 and 11. After turning water to wine, the Bible ends that beautiful rendition by telling us verse 11 now. It says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. Is that in your Bible? And the Bible says, and manifested forth his glory. 
That was the intent of the miracle. To see something about God you have never seen. That means all of us together have been, God has deposited different layers of his glory in our lives and our destiny. And your assignment is to walk with him as you unveil it. For some to come in worship, for some to come in creativity, for some to come in business, some to come in ministry. But by all means, that what you call your lifetime is the time allotted for you to walk with the Holy Spirit until the glory of God manifests in and through your life did he not say it so well in matthew 5 and verse 16 after telling us we are light and salt he says permit your light the word let means permit to so shine before men he says that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven John 15 and verse 8. Herein is our father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16. Thou hast not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Hallelujah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in as much as we have been called to be a representation of the wisdom, the power, the grace of God. Sadly, the current state of the church is not an accurate portrait. It's not an accurate representation of this design and this agenda. Even Paul speaking to the Hebrew church, he quoted what the psalmist said. What is man that thou art mindful of? The son of man that thou visitest him. He says, for you have made him a little lower than Elohim. Crowned him with glory and power. You have set him over the works of your hands. And that in doing so, you left nothing that was not under his feet. He says, but we do not yet see all things. As it is, when we look at South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Europe, US. We do not yet see. A manifestation of the glory of God by and through the church to match God's expectation. This is our assignment in this conference. With the intelligence of a surgeon, with the wisdom of a consultant to diagnose what is wrong. What is the contrast between that which has been spoken and intended by the spirit and that which is our current reality. In as much as God is helping the church, we have to admit an uncomfortable truth that the church today is not a worthy portrait of the power, the wisdom, the grace of God. That men cannot so learn God through the lens of our lives. If they depend on our lives to know who God is, they have a legitimate ground to run away from him. The powerlessness that is captured in our lives, are we together now? Bold propositions about God without the fortitude to defend it. We say God lifts, but we are not lifted. We say God can bless, but it is clear that his hand is not at work in that wise. We say God can change times and seasons, but we look like victims of moments, victims of seasons. We quote that all things work together for good to them that love God, but our frustration is clear. Even unbelievers have to comfort us because they know that something is wrong. But we do not yet see all things under his feet. We do not yet see all things so when God looks at my life, Joshua Selman, he may tap me at the back, but he will still say, son, you are not yet an accurate representation. Listen, when you look at yourself in a mirror and you do not see yourself, you clean the mirror or you do something about yourself. Uh, if the mirror is clear and there is nothing wrong with you, there should be an exact, we call it object and image. They should agree. Am I right on that? That means when God looks at the church, he should see himself. That is proof that the church has been transformed. That we have evolved. In Revelations, when you read chapter 18, chapter 19, he spoke to Paul and he spoke to John and he said, come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he said, he showed me a city, not a woman, a city. A city that was equal in length, equal in breadth, 
equal in height and he said John this is the lamb's wife if you know anything about a woman preparing for wedding a few weeks to her wedding is a very precious moment while the man is trying to sort bills the woman is sorting herself you we learn that with Esther it took Esther one year to be prepared that was a prophetic representation an adumbration of the church Hey guy, the keeper of the, the virgins gave her a certain ointment. There was an oil. Her, her skin needed to be in a kind of fashion that will appease the king. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife, the ecclesia, the church. And what he showed John was not weakness. What he showed John was not imbalance. He showed a city. A city in strength a city dexterous a city of power he said this is the lamb's wife that means our assignment is to set our gaze on that standard and never stop if that is the lamb's wife if that is God's expectation for me then it means I must learn how to walk with the word of God walk with the spirit of God take advantage of all the resources of heaven to keep evolving and never stop him. No wonder the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. Are we still together? It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then he says, we all, say all. all. When it has to do with evolving to become like Christ, it is the destiny of all. There are things in the Bible that he will say he gave some. But as far as transformation and conformity to the image and the character of the Christ is concerned, it is the destiny of every believer. But we all, with faces unveiled, beholding him as in a mirror, he says we are changed from glory to glory. Glory to glory. That is the destiny. Glory to glory. So any believer who means business with God, any pastor, any man of God, any captain of industry, whoever has any passion for the things of God, must admit uncomfortably so that whilst we have done well, there is still a lot to be done. As far as God's standard is concerned, reminds me of Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry. Mighty miracles, raised the dead, did so many things. Here's the conclusion of a hungry and a desperate man. I count myself, he says, to not have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. He says, I set my gaze towards the things that are behind. For me, he said, I press. That should be a language that only learners will speak. Professionals should not speak that language. But when it has to do with becoming like Christ... That must become your language. I press. Even as a man of God, I press. As a businessman, I press. Because there is a standard. You are not given the liberty of choosing your standard. There is a benchmark already in Christ. And your assignment is to walk with the spirit of God until you become an experience. It says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Are we together? Tonight, because of our time, I just want to give you three reasons why the church is in this current state. Three reasons. When it has to do with the business of conformity and transformation by the Spirit, there are no masters, there are no professionals. All of us together remain students in the school of the Spirit. So the one who is speaking to you today, we are only speaking on the strength of the election of grace. But as far as that pursuit is concerned, we do not stand as those who have arrived. That will be pride and deception. We must, we must lead a generation to understand and respect hunger. If at any point you believe you are arrived, it's an attack. Are we together? Hmm. 
South Africa. Are we here together? So three reasons. This is my assignment tonight. Commissioned with power. We're examining the church. Why is the church weak? Why do we have sick people still return sick? Believers who love Jesus still financially incapacitated. People who love the Lord not rising to places of influence and power. Legislating on behalf of heaven. And yet we call ourselves expensive and implicated names. For instance, ambassadors. You ask any serious government and any serious nation. There are diplomats here seated. I'm not here to insult your pedigree. But you know that if an individual tells you he's an ambassador. Your primary assignment is to promote and protect the interest of of that nation and that government in a foreign land and if at any point you are found fraternizing with any government at the expense of your homeland there are severe consequences first to you and then to the nation you represent hmm. is that true three reasons for the current state of the church psalms 49 and verse 20 disturbed me for very many years why this kind of scripture should be found in the bible i like us to read it together shout it if you're a christian ready one to read man that is in honor and understandeth it not is like a beast that perisheth what kind of a scripture is this that a man who has been placed in a position of honor but that if there is no understanding of that status that man is reduced to become like a beast in the field that has no destiny except to be a prey to other beasts. Man that is in honor, that understandeth it not, will perish like a beast in the field. There are three reasons. Pray in the spirit for one minute. We're in a spiritual conference. This is beyond a lecture. This is beyond a seminar. This is beyond just selling an intellectual idea. Sabashala kapras keberentos karia, krafas kebelede bakatos kapre samashanas. Nani sene kebereketas kapra kashida kaliata. Pratos shala kapras kebrandi kebeletia. San apostolic and a prophetic conference. God is helping us to know and love and understand him. Hallelujah. Reason number one, very quickly. South Africa, please hear me. Africa, all those who are connecting. The first reason as to why the church, even though we have been destined unto glory, to be an accurate portrait, a representation of God in his entirety, we have so fallen short of that standard. And reason number one, as the Bible reveals, is that there is a bankruptcy of a revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is. Now, don't assume you understand what I'm saying. You just write and be patient with me. The absence of a revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is. Man that is in honor and understand that it not. My Bible, your Bible, our Bible say that he will be like a beast in the field that perisheth. Psalms 82 and verse 5 tells us, they know not, neither will they understand, the Bible says. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse, and Jesus himself made reference to this verse. He said, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, are children of the most high. But not knowing that will lead to the next verse. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. There are many things that the Bible says the church is. There are many things that Jesus said the believer is. In communicating your interest for God and the things of his spirit. 
you have a responsibility to journey with the Holy Spirit through scripture to find out with the passion of an archaeologist what did he say about me what has he said about me Gideon never took out time to find out he was hiding as soon as the angel of the Lord came to him he called him by his destiny oh thou mighty man of valor and Gideon said no that is a foreign statement nobody in my father's house ever told us we are that mighty we are the least this is the information we have on record we are the least in our father's house and the least of all the tribes and the angel said you are wrong I'm bringing to you another identity you cannot carry that revelation to the battlefield you will lose already before the journey at the end of it Gideon blew with the shofar and 33,000 people were summoned. The same person who was hiding. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, hear me. This is more than a theological dissertation. It will be by the spirit to give us a revelation of who we have become in light of who Christ is. Let's walk a few scriptures. Do you like scriptures? I promise I will not keep you later than necessary. If I show you this scripture and we wrap up tonight that is sufficient for tonight but I want you to be sensitive because you see the same Lord is rich unto all but the reason why it looks like certain people carry greater weights and dimensions of his glory is not that God decided to isolate a few people necessarily the Bible says even among the stars one different from another in glory he said there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial are we together? In fact, here's what he says. He says, in a great house, there are four kinds of vessels, all called vessels, but four kinds of gold, silver, wood, clay. Some vessels already, by their formation, they are unto dishonor. And some vessels are unto honor. And that every man has the assignment to transit himself. In our world today, clay and wood cannot become gold and silver. But in God's economy, transition is possible. That clay and wood can start evolving. Something you can do with God can change your state until you become silver and you become gold. What does the Lord say about us? In fact, let me give you the three reasons there will be a discussion all through my sessions in this conference. So number one is a product of identity. 1 John 4.17 1 John 4.17 Please give it to us. 1 John 4.17 The Bible says, Herein is our love made perfect, entire, that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is. South Africa, is that in your Bible? As he is not as he was if the bible says as he was there are many many things jesus did not carry when he walked upon the earth for instance no man could receive eternal life from him when he walked upon the earth because the substitutionary sacrifice was not yet done are we together So as he is, so are we, not so we will become, so are we in this world. Reason number two for the current state of the church is that we have not yet understood by revelation our mandate, our purpose, and our commission. The second reason why the church carries a semblance of defeat a semblance of weakness is that we have not yet understood by revelation our corporate mandate our corporate purpose and our commission the church is yet to understand our mandate yet to understand our purpose when Jesus walked upon the earth did you notice that he was so meticulous in finding out and vocally declaring his purpose for being there in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says he went to the temple and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him as his custom was. And the Bible says he found there where it was written concerning him. Apostle Paul making reference to that scripture, he said, Lo, I come 
in the volume of the book as it is written of me. That means God is not deciding what to do with the church. The church came as a conclusion of God's intelligence. He factored in many things and arrived at this conclusion that the most formidable formula for this agenda is the church. And yet we wallow around as if God is hoping to know what to do with us. The inability to understand as a corporate people. Listen, the basis for unity, many of you here are leadership experts. And in leadership we learn that unity is difficult until there is vision. Vision is the force that binds, is the force of cohesion. It is impossible to be able to bring a people together in spite of their diversities until they have a vision and a creed that becomes bigger than their individual pursuits. This is how nations come together. Am I right on that? Yeah. So a vision is projected that becomes more superior to every other pursuit. Here in South Africa, we have such across Africa, across the globe. So any responsible citizen should be able to tell you the vision. I was sitting here when our beautiful people came to do the announcement. And among the many things they said was with precision so that you are not confused. They told us the vision of the church, the mission of the church. Is that true? So the church, I can tell you, we have our individual agendas. But the corporate mandate of the ecclesia is seldom known, seldom taught, and largely not understood. So you ask the average Christian, why are you here? He will say things like to serve God or things like to worship God. He's just coining spiritual languages to, to just ease off ignorance and guilt. But you probe into what exactly they said, they will, you, it will be clear that they do not understand what they just said. We live to serve God. What does that mean? What does serving God mean? Coming to church? No. So one of the things we are going to be learning, if the church must rise to that point of influence and governance, it is important for us to know by revelation and without ambiguity our corporate mandate. What does God expect of us? Who is the believer? Why are we here? When we say church, what do we mean? Hallelujah. There are institutions that bring standardization to many fields and many practices. I believe that is so even in South Africa. So you have maybe an institution that regulates legal practice. Am I right on that? The assignment is to keep the practice within the coordinates of her vision. Because there is a tendency to veer off. Either through carelessness, through staleness of knowledge or any other factor and so an institution was set up to make sure that people refresh their understanding as to why whether it's the world of businessmen the legal world or whatever it is why it was set up in the first place some of the leading institutions across the globe they lead their various fields because among the many things that they do is that they they imbibe as a creed in the mind of the students, the lecturers, and all who are part of that institution. This is why we exist. For this sole reason. If at any point you are found fighting this bigger agenda, even if what you are doing is correct, with respect to that agenda, you are a rebel. So that as a believer, you don't choose what to do simply because of the spirituality around it. No. There is an exact description as to what believers should be doing. It, listen, what you call your purpose and your assignment is you drawing from a piece of that big picture. Your assignment is your contribution to that larger body of God's program. Are we together? And with all due respect, ministers of the gospel, this is an apostolic conference. One of the things we must restore is an understanding of our corporate mandate as believers. Why did God leave the church? So we have all kinds of ideas. For instance, some say soul winning. Some say various things. 
pieces of the truth but there has to be a concise and an intelligent presentation that matches God's expectation this is why this convergence was allowed by the spirit so in addition to knowing our identity in light of who Christ is we need to understand the corporate mandate of the church have I lost you are we together let me give you reason number three what is the third reason for the current state of the church do me a favor your only thank you gift for me is to promise me you are going to listen to this message again and that you are going to extend this message to anybody you know who loves God and is very serious this is beyond a, an anointed preacher sharing truth this is God bringing order and restoration to his body you may have heard me say it in my teachings that the days of superstar Christianity is over. No. God's agenda is bigger than any Joshua Selman. Or, no, no, no. It is a privilege for us to be conduit. Our focus must be him, his program, his agenda. And the truth is that in doing that, he will not leave us small. The economy was designed to lift everything that serves God. Did you hear what I said? God's economy was designed to lift and glorify everything that served him. Back home, we call it Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Everything. Nothing serves God and remains at the same level. No. So you do not have to bother about your state while you serve God. Because serving God will make you look like a fool. But if you understand the intelligence and the justice of God, your consolation is that everything that serves God rises as you lift his name. Reason number three. I'm just introducing my session. The third reason why the church seems to not be a perfect portrait and a reflection of God's expectation is that we do not yet have the knowledge of the spiritual resources that have been given to the believer alongside the dynamics of activating them. Number three, the bankruptcy of the, the knowledge of the spiritual resources. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, that God would open our eyes to see the resources that were coordinated to become systems of advantage to the believer and then to have an understanding on how to activate them. Ephesians 1 and verse 3 tells us Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and without delay he went straight to tell them that God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All, not some. And he says they reside in heavenly places. So there is a problem there. Because you do not need them there. So the dynamics of understanding and transporting those resources to be used here and now for your advantage. Many believers do not understand. The average believer cannot tell you the resources that have been given to us by reason of our being grafted into Christ. There are many resources only an irresponsible government will send an individual to represent them and not equip them. Is that true? Any government that is sending an ambassador or anyone to promote their interest among the many packages, they ensure and even insist that that person is well equipped. A hospital can have professionals but not have the requisite machinery in terms of gadgets. And you see the hospital misrepresenting. There can be professors in that hospital. But they will tell you the latest machine to diagnose this and that is not there. And so the government, if the government wants to step up the standard in that hospital, beyond training the individuals, they must insist that state of the art materials. And how many of you know that any material that helps and sells in terms of gadgets are not cheap? So, for you to know that God placed so much value, you need to understand the extent of resources. When David stood before Goliath, foolish Goliath was looking at his hands and David was saying, no, 
No, what I hold is only a token. It's a representation of greater resources. I didn't come alone. Goliath said, am I a dog? You come to me with your spheres. And David said, you will soon know that as I'm standing here, there are resources. Do you believe that? Listen, when you have an understanding of this, you will never, never stand to cry as though one who were left as an orphan, no, no. There are resources beyond our awareness. And it is the assignment of the Spirit of God to search the mind of Christ, the Bible says, and to show us the things that have been freely given. In fact, yes, how the Bible puts it, Apostle Peter intelligently presents it. He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of, our, of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, according as his divine power. Is that in your Bible? Hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. But he says, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. He says, whereby are given to us, here it is, exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There are resources, ladies and gentlemen. There are resources. There are resources that the church can use to build nations. There are resources. And I'm not just, the least of them is finances. No, God will not insult you to just leave finances. No, that is, that in, in the ranking of spiritual resources, finances is the least. Because you will be learning that money itself is a product. And there is another capital that buys it. He calls it true riches. When I pray for people, I bless them and I tell them, may you never be so poor that all you have is money. Because there are resources in the spirit that are greater than finances. If you doubt me, ask two people in the Bible. One, the rich fool. He had money, but there were other things he did not have. Number two, the rich young ruler. He had everything and yet he came to Jesus. He said, there's something I do not have. Good master. There is another kind of resource beyond Hallelujah. I'm not going ahead of myself, but every time you see people bless in the Bible, they never give anything physical and material. No. Abraham calls all his sons and gives them gifts and says, go. Then he says, Isaac, come. Kneel down. I want to place something on you. Listen. Never give Isaac anything that is recorded. He said, go. What is so powerful about spiritual resources that Esau as an adult will cry? What will make an adult who is already gifted, hard working? He went to the wilderness and brought food so he was not lazy. And he said, Father, such is there nothing left? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart, that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.